Welcome into another opening video where we're gonna be exploring an aggressive opening for black against the white's first move pawn d4. Therefore, if you're playing d4 yourself as white, or if you're looking for an aggressive opening for black against the one playing d4 against you on move one, then this video will be right for you. And I've prepared a really interesting opening for you today because we're gonna be exploring the so-called England Gambit where we give up the central pawn. And I gotta confess that for a long time I thought that it's a highly dubious move and basically just incorrect for black and it just hopes for a single trap. But I've discovered a much better way of playing it that I'm gonna share with you today. So usually when white plays pawn d4, they're looking for a more positional strategic game and they don't want to be attacked early. Right? In contrast to this, for example, if white plays pawn e4 on move 1, then it's a more sharp, dynamic position, and you have a lot of variations such as Sicilian defense, Scandinavian defense, and a wide range of options that gives you an active play. But against d4, I've been struggling myself for quite some time finding an aggressive opening for, for black. And there we go. There is this England gambit, pawn e5. At first, again, looks ridiculous, we're just giving up the pawn for no reason. And usually most players think that this England Gambit is a bad opening for black because they usually try to follow up with the knight c6 followed by queen e7 and hoping for a trap. I'll link a video about that trap in particular which you may discover and in this case if you play it that way then it's indeed a classical trap in a bad sense of this word meaning that you're just hoping for your opponent to be unprepared and to catch them into the trap but if they are prepared you end up with a lost position. But what I'm suggesting you to do is a completely different story. Here after white accepts the pawn sacrifice instead of trying for some cheap trick we're just aiming for quick development and a long-term attacking opportunities. So we're gonna play here pawn d6, just offering white to keep capturing your pawns, and when they do that, which is the most played move by white, then we recapture by the bishop. And we got a classical gambit, like if you think about different gambits, like any gambits, then basically we're sacrificing usually a pawn to be ahead in development, to open up some lines and to get nice attacking position. And that's exactly what you do, but just with the black pieces, because usually it's much easier to play gambit with white, because with an extra tempo it's easier to launch your attack, but here we're reverting the situation and we're ready to launch your attack with black. Now, what you achieved with this pawn sacrifice is that, first of all, you're already ahead in development, you have a piece developed, also you have a lot of now open files for your pieces so that they can be brought into the game real quick, and for white it'll take longer, and therefore you'll be ahead in development and you'll be ready to kick off your attack. Now, let's see what's gonna happen after that. While we'll play knight of 3 or any other move, you develop your other knight to c6, uh, by the way, little note here, we de developed the queenside knight first because generally speaking it's part of your plan to castle queenside. So you want to bring your queenside pieces out as early as possible and then to castle there because that will not only allow your king to be in safe but also will support your attack. We'll see it in a moment. Now what goes knight c3? We continue with development of our queenside pieces so we play bishop g4 also putting the bishop to an active position where it starts putting pressure along this diagonal. And white will usually respond with pawn e3 trying to support their knight. If they play something else, I'll show you in a moment what to do there as well. Now, you continue with the same plan, you want to develop your queenside pieces, therefore you play queen to e7, and now in the next move you are ready to castle queenside. So after white plays something like bishop e2, we're casting queenside indeed, and now not only your king is safe now, but your rook is now on an open file and is ready to create some threats there. Now, this position, there is a nice way for white to lose quickly, and it's the second most played move in this position where where white just simply castles. A normal move, you castled, and so white wants to castle as well, but in this case, it's a losing mistake, and I'd like to ask you to think about this and to write it down in the comments below how would you play here as black. Normally, castling is not the right thing for white to do, so let's revert that move. And instead of that, white would usually play bishop to d2. That's the most played move in this position, even though castling is still popular, even though it's a losing mistake. Now, if you just play knight of 6, simply develop, white castles. And believe it or not, this position is quite almost winning for you. 
I mean, it, it sounds strange because it looks like both players were just playing normal developing moves, but that's exactly the case. You're virtually already winning the game because your attack on the king side is just much faster. And white is quite stuck here, honestly, because you're putting pressure on this file. Your bishop is putting pressure here. You're also ready to launch your attack on the king side, which black usually does by playing pawn h5. And your attack there against the white skin is just much faster. You have a lot of things to do. You can push the, this pawn forward. You can bring your knight also to strengthen your attack. Maybe the g-pawn can go forward. You have a lot on the table. And for white, they really have nothing really. And this extra pawn of white on e3 makes no difference at all, to be honest. It doesn't just, it, it really doesn't help white. Usually they play pawn h3, which is a natural move trying to get rid of this annoying bishop, but in reality this h3 move doesn't change anything at all, because white does not even want to take there really. Just to illustrate, I'll play some move for black, some random move, and if white actually wants to take there, then guess what, it opens up this h-file, and together with this bishop, the rook creates deadly threats, not, not to mention that the knight is now hanging because it's attacked by the pawn, and therefore here you're gonna win this game pretty easily and you're gonna checkmate white. Therefore, white is not even threatening to capture the bishop, which makes the move pawn h3 not helpful at all, but anyway, they do play this move, and here you have a lot of attacking options, but the easiest one is just to trade here on f3, you're going for the straightforward checkmate with queen e5, aiming for queen h2 checkmate. And it's not easy for white to stop that, in fact white cannot stop that at all, because the only move to block the diagonal is playing pawn g3, but now pawn h4 opens up the position and basically white is done. They can't capture here or move the pawn forward, because in this case just queen h2, checkmate, so they can't do that. And if not, guess what, you're gonna capture yourself on g3 on the next move, completely open the position of the white king. Your rook will also kick in here from the h-file and that's the beginning of the end for white, within a couple of moves you're gonna checkmate white. And let me also highlight once again the beauty of this gambit that we just observed, the most common moves of white. That's how your opponents will react most frequently when you play the England gambit the way that I've just shared with you. So that's, that's just amazing, you know, against the most common moves you're getting an easily winning attack. Alright, now let's go over the England Gambit once again, we're offering here the second pawn for white to capture, which allows your bishop to be developed with a tempo, and now after these moves, let's see what if white tries to bring their bishop out. So far we analyzed the more passive move, pawn to e3, but what if they try to play actively and play bishop g5? At first it may seem challenging that they're attacking your queen and may disrupt your plan, but in reality that doesn't achieve anything. You just play pawn f6, attack the bishop, and after he goes back, you just keep with your usual plan, nothing changed at all. You still play queen e7, aiming to castle queen side, and basically nothing really changed. They will anyway need to play e3 at some point, you will castle queen side, opposing your rook to the white queen so that you can create some threats there. And yeah, it's all the same stuff basically. This bishop on h4 does not help white that much, as you can see, it doesn't attack anything. Quite the opposite, in some cases it may give you some extra temples to push pawns forward on the king side and attack that bishop, so this bishop may even be in, you know, in trouble in some moves. So let's say white will play a bishop d3, trying to develop the bishop and also to block this line so that the rook cannot attack the queen. Then you can play knight e5, putting more pressure here, together with the bishop, the knight is pinned, so white is also quite in trouble. Also white can't easily castle kingside now, because in this case you can always capture there on f3 and disrupt the white's pawn structure, which will give you a very easily winning attack. So probably white will play queen e2 trying to castle queenside. But in this case you can say, hey, I know your plan and I'm gonna break it as well. So you can play bishop b4 and invite white into castling king queenside, because in this case you can now capture this knight and also disrupt the pawn structure there and to checkmate the white skin easily there as well. So whatever white does here, they are quite stuck basically with their king safety. There is no safe place for the king and you're just gonna keep pushing, keep attacking, it's very simple. By the way, a general hint for fighting attacking moves in the middle game, in any position, even if you forgot the moves that I'm sharing with you in this video. When you develop your pieces in an opening, after that the next thing you should gotta think about is how do I attack? And the way to do that is to ask yourself, how do I move forward, preferably to the opponent's half of the board, 
and to attack something there. So that's how you find all these forward moves, such as knight e5, that should be four. Maybe you want to play pawn g5. Maybe your queen will come here to c5 and support your attack over there. See that you've got a lot of moves. If you want to elaborate on that more, I've got a free master class where I teach you this stuff, how to find attacking moves as well, some other useful things for the middle gameplay. But for now, we can just summarize that basically white is not safe here at all, and I would definitely pick black here to play this position. And here's the final little but important nuance for playing against stronger opponents. Most of your opponents will lightheartedly capture here, which in fact is good for you because it allows you to develop your bishop. But if you're facing a stronger level opponent, they may hold on to the pawn on e5 and just play knight to f3. In this case, you play knight c6, putting more pressure onto this pawn and once again asking white to capture here on d6, which will just transpose into what we analyzed previously. But again, if you're facing a strong opponent, he or she may play bishop f4, trying to put more pressure on you and to defend the pawn as well as to put pressure here. And if you aren't ready, this may challenge you. But you're in luck, because after this video you'll know what to do. And there is an interesting solution. The solution is quite funny because you just keep playing the same moves all the time. That's another beauty of this opening. You keep playing the same moves no matter what. You just play bishop g4, similar to all the previous operations we analyzed. And now I think to, to himself, hey, but I can now capture here on d6. It looks super advantageous to white, because if you are forced to recapture that way, you'll have this weak pawn, the d-file is no longer open, and it basically breaks the entire black's plan. So that's what white is hoping for. But instead of that, you have a nice tactical solution. You play queen of sex here, which is a multi-purpose move. You attack the bishop over here, you attack the b-pawn over there, as well as the rook potentially in the future, and you still prepare castling queenside as always. Therefore, it still helps you to realize your main plan as well. And this key move, queen of six, basically solves all of your problems, and that's how you deal with this. I just checked it in the database. Usually white goes queen c1, trying to defend both their weaknesses, the bishop and the pawn. And after that, you can now freely take the, the pawn over there on d6. In this case, it's just an exchange and you got a normal game, after that you can castle, develop your knight, and basically you got a position similar to all the previous operations we analyzed, where you're ahead in development, you have open lines and diagonals, and you can start attacking white early in the game, which gives you this long-term pressure and a hard time for white to figure out how to defend properly. Let me also take this moment to thank you for your support. A couple days ago, my YouTube channel was hacked by some crypto scammers, and as a result of that, YouTube terminated the channel completely. And for a moment, it's been quite stressful because all these years of the hard work could just disappear in one second. That was insane. But at this point, many of you guys sent me messages with your encouragement and support and concern about the channel. So that was very touching. Thank you very much for that. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Join our chess family, and I hope that you will get a lot of great victories as a result of that. Thank you once again. Take care, and I'll keep serving you as best as I can.